Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Cassie and today we're going to be talking about the very popular Misha and Puff popcorn sweater. If you've been hanging around the faux fashion side of the internet or honestly just like Pinterest in general, you probably would have noticed this sweater. It has gained a lot of recent popularity. Uh, it's been around for quite some time, I believe 2011. I've seen this sweater, you know, in the last couple years or so, and I've really, really wanted one. They're beautiful. I've heard the quality is amazing. But the $500 price tag was just, it was a sticking point for me. It, it's like half of my rent. So it was a bit of a challenge to think about spending that much money on a sweater. And then I realized that I know how to knit. And when I saw the Louise pullover sweater pattern come up, I was like, here it is. I'm going to do it. I'm going to make this sweater and I'm going to have my very own. And as I was knitting it, you know, I got to think, is this sweater worth $500? You know, how much time does it really take to knit something like this? You know, the yarn and the time and all of that stuff, like, is $500 a reasonable price to pay for a sweater? And so I started to do some digging and I thought that I would make this video comparing, you know, my own hand knit version and the process behind it to Misha and Puff's version on their website and see if it's really worth the $500. Before we get into all of that though, if you are not yet subscribed, I would love if you subscribe. I talk about knitting, sewing, general like DIY garment making and sustainable fashion. So I would love to have you around for all of that. Is that something you're interested in? And if you could give this video a thumbs up, it really helps me out as I start to grow this humble channel. Now let's get into the discussion. For reference, I'm wearing the Louise sweater. It's a knitting pattern and I knit this over about six weeks. And so for the sake of this video, we'll say that I worked on it an hour every day for six weeks, maybe a bit more, maybe a bit less. It's hard to say I didn't time myself. So let's say, you know, I'm charging for my labor. It's we'll go with $14 an hour because that's how much minimum wage is in Canada and about $14, give or take maybe. And let's say it took me 42 hours, which is, you know, an hour for six weeks basically that's about 588 dollars so that's just the cost in labor that's a lot i mean but at the same time it's still minimum wage so we'll keep that in you know in our in mind as we keep going 588 dollars plus ten dollars for the pattern that i used plus 39.75 for the uh yarn that i use that comes to Six hundred and thirty-seven seventy-five. So if I were to sell this based on labor and material cost, we are looking at over six hundred dollars, and that's minimum wage in this country, and that's for one sweater. So we'll keep all that in mind again as we continue to look at like the big picture. For Misha and Puff on their website, I won't go into too much, but they go quite into detail about the artisans that they work with, specifically um, people in Peru. They work with knitters who hand knit the sweaters. So it's not a machine that's knitting them. It's women predominantly, I believe, who are hand knitting your sweater. So the same way that I was hand knitting the sweater on circular needles, you can see photos of them on their website, hand knitting their sweaters on circular needles. It's pretty, it's pretty wild. And when I realized that, it really did give me some perspective as a knitter because I realized like, wow, like, you know, this is someone's job is to knit these sweaters. And so on that side of things, do I believe that like their labor is worth it? Like definitely, like a hundred percent. Plus Misha and Puff, their sweaters are, you know, they're a hundred percent, I think organic merino wool. And that comes into play as well because they're using natural dyes and they're hand dyeing them themselves. They are, you know, working with farmers, um, with sheep farmers and you know, all of that. So they're really like, involved in, in the process. And like I said, this is all on their website so you can go check it out. And I don't know how much they pay their knitters over there, um, probably like according to, you know, cost of living in Peru and all of that. But let's say like they are making a fair wage because it does seem like Misha and Puff does care about fair wages. So when you look at it that way, labor cost and all of that stuff, I think a $500 sweater does make sense. That said, 
it's not definitely not doable for most people. Even if you were to save, you know, a good chunk of money, it is difficult to justify putting aside five hundred dollars to buy a sweater. Which is where you get into, you know, knitters starting to make these sweaters themselves. Like I said, I thought that I would give it a try based on the patterns that are available, and I really love this pattern. So why don't we talk a little bit about it? So like I said, this is the Louise uh, pullover sweater. It is a popcorn knit raglan style sweater and I used a DK weight and this is the color orange from BC Garn Samilla. And I'm really, really happy with the color. I don't usually wear colors like this. I also knit the extra small predominantly because I did not have enough yarn. And when I say I didn't have enough yarn, like I had a very let me show you how much yarn that I had one second so this is how much yarn I have left it's really is not a lot um, you can see there not a whole lot to work with and so you know we're really <laughs> we're really playing yarn chicken on this one and as a result you know the sleeves are a little bit short and it's a little bit more cropped than I wanted so I could have gone with you know an extra ball of yarn and maybe made the small and that would have made things a little bit better but i haven't fully blocked it yet i've only blocked the torso so i think i'm gonna block the sleeves and re-block the torso and see how it all goes but you know like i said i made this in six weeks so i wouldn't say it's a quick knit but it's really quite fun i really enjoyed making the bobbles i found the instructions pretty straightforward and easy to follow especially once you get past the yoke area, which is kind of the more tricky part, if, if anything, but again, it's not even that difficult. And then you just go straight into the body and you knit basically as long as you want and you um, knit the sleeves as long as you want. And like I said, they're a little bit short. They kind of naturally fall around here for me, but I am going to try to block them and make them a bit longer. It might not be my ideal length, maybe, you know, I was just about to say maybe I'll get another ball of yarn, but really I think this is where we're at and if anything I'll make another one and maybe make a smaller, a medium even, just to have a bit of that like roominess. But I do quite like how fitted it is to my body. Um, I don't usually go for a silhouette like this, but I think it's quite nice and uh, is a bit of a change for, you know, when you're always wearing bulky sweaters in the winter time, it's nice to have something that is a little bit more fitting I think. It just actually shows that you have a body under like so many different layers so really like the sweater pattern i really like how it turned out i had a lot of fun knitting it and i i'm happy to have a sweater that you know looks like the misha and puff sweater um it's something that like truthfully i probably would have never purchased so being able to have something that i knit myself for one it gives me an appreciation of what it's like to hand knit you know a sweater that is being sold for $500 and really like, shows you the value of like the craft that you're doing. And I think it also can inspire others to, you know, if you can't afford that like beautiful trendy thing that you want or even non-trendy, you know, this can be a really classic item, but you can make it yourself. And, you know, with you'll appreciate it even more if you, if you make it yourself, I think. So, that's all I wanted to say. I just wanted to talk quickly about the difference between the Misha and Puff sweater and my own hand-knit version. Do I think it's worth it? Absolutely. I think that Misha and Puff are doing really cool things and I love that they're paying knitters in Peru rather than outsourcing and charging, you know, a lot less for labor but still like increasing or jacking up the selling cost. I think they're really transparent with their practices. Um, you can also buy their wool on their website. So I believe their wool is $29 or $27. If you go to their website, uh, you can see how much they are charging for their yarn. So you can actually buy the yarn that they use. They also, I believe, sell and have some free uh, knitting patterns. I don't think they have a knitting pattern for the popcorn sweater specifically, but they've got some scarves and hats and a few other things up there. So they're really encouraging the maker's practice. The owner was a, the founder was a maker herself. She knit the sweaters herself and then, you know, started her company by outsourcing them to these knitters in Peru. So I think 
you know, it's a really cool business model. I think it's pretty rare to see something like that. And I definitely support the slow fashion industry. It's just not easy to support it financially all the time. And so that's where, you know, your own garment making and adventures come into play. Thank you so much for being here. This is a part of my Vlogmas series. So if you haven't seen those yet, definitely go check them out. I have a playlist um, all for my Vlogmas videos. And again, if you're not subscribed, I would love if you did subscribe here. Uh, also give this video a like if you did like it because that really helps me with the YouTube algorithm. And if you want to hang out more, I'm on TikTok and Instagram. I post pretty frequently and I'm trying to get more um, frequent with YouTube as well, which is why I'm doing Vlogmas. So again, thank you so much for being here. I will see you on Monday with my next week of Vlogmas videos. See you then. Bye.